So I got myself a new lens. It is a 50mm prime for the Sony E-mount made for full frame sensor cameras. Despite the other first party options like the 1.4 and the 1.2 and the plethora of other third party 50mm for the Sony E-mount, I decided to go for this infamous cheap and plasticky 50mm f1.8 from Sony. You will see me using the lens throughout this video. Both the photos and the b-roll clips were all shot with that lens paired with my Sony a7 IV. It is not really a full review video since I only used it for about 3 photo sessions and took roughly 2000 photos with it, but still you will see plenty of photo and video samples so you can have an idea of how the lens performs and what kind of images you can get with it. trying to anticipate what kind of question you would have if you are interested into that lens and I'll start with the obvious, the image quality, and it is very good. Sharpness is on point all the way from f1.8. If you own or ever tried the 85mm f1.8 from Sony, I think both lenses really share the same feel and same colors. Both are from the FE line of lenses, so they are not G Master, they are not even G. Uh, they are basically the cheapest alternative when it comes to Sony Prime lenses, but I really believe they deliver strong performances. I am lucky to be doing mostly personal work, if we consider everything I share on YouTube personal work too, and this lens is definitely more than enough for that. Let's just not forget that some people were able to create full body of work and being known globally, using very low res cameras, small digicam, basically all sorts of cameras, so this lens is definitely enough for personal work, but I think it can also be used for professional work too. Still being a Sony first party lens, big netting, the distortion is very well controlled. The only downside I would say is the chromatic aberration. You can see some purple and green fringing in some situations, but if you use the manual dials in Lightroom, it can help to correct that a good amount. This lens was released a very long time ago and did not get any updates, and it was very well known to be a poor performer in terms of autofocus. I don't know the whole technical aspect of it, but with the latest lens firmware, and if you pair it with a recent camera body, the autofocus is much improved apparently. I have to say that I agree with that. Autofocus is slower than more recent lenses, but it is quite flawless, not hunting and very well for video too. High autofocus is working well, and in these easier scenarios like the b-roll included in this video, I had absolutely no issue with it.
longest time I've been wanting a 50 mm prime for my Sony camera and interestingly I have a 35, an 85, a 24 to 70 mm but never owned a good old nifty 50. Over the past few years of shooting photos and videos both in the streets and while traveling I realized that one of the most important factors when it comes to choosing gear now is its size and its weight. I am now totally okay to sacrifice a little bit of image quality of autofocus speed etc if the lens and camera body combination is well balanced and basically creates less resistance for me to pick it up and shoot for extended hours. That's really what motivated my choice to go for this very cheap, I think I got mine for 150 bucks and very light lens, it is under 200 grams I believe and it seems to deliver a pretty good result. When I pair it with my Sony A7 IV and use my neck strap to walk around, it is very well balanced, it is not font heavy which is a very big deal for me. Recently we see more and more full frame cameras being released and the brands are really making a strong point saying that they designed them to be lighter, smaller etc, which is a good thing but full frame cameras are usually paired with full frame lenses which tend to be bulky and heavy. So yes now we can have a light full frame camera but if you pair it with a heavy lens or a heavy prime opening at 1.4 or 1.2 the whole setup will be very front heavy which is not comfortable to carry with any sort of strap and your wrist will also get very tired after only a few hours of shooting. So if you are considering the weight when getting your next camera, don't only think about the camera but also with what lens you would be pairing it. So then we could also start the discussion full frame versus APS-C, the latter benefit from lighter bodies and also lighter lenses since they need less glass to cover the smaller sensor. And the APS-C seems now plenty enough if you want shallow depth of field, low light performance, all that kind of things. But that's not the topic of this video and we could discuss that for hours I believe. So in summary I chose this lens because of its size, its weight and its price but now that I used it for a little bit I'm also pretty convinced by the image quality and the general ease of use. I may do a more complete review of the lens later down the line but I really need more time to have a full grasp of what I like and what I dislike about it. I would have a better idea about durability, reliability, that kind of thing. Also one thing that it worth noting is that it is not weather sealed. The lens is actually extending to focus so it's probably not the best option when it comes to shooting in pouring rain or in a sandstorm I guess but so far I can only recommend it if you want to get a 50 millimeter prime without breaking the bank it is a solid choice
So that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.